Welcome back guys! Today we are going to take a look at the valence batteries and convert them to the BMS from Batrium. So here we have the valence 12 volt batteries. They are lithium iron phosphate batteries and they do have 4 cells inside with roughly 130 amp hours. So what we are going to do today is take this battery, throw out this old BMS unit that is inside it that is crap and replace it with 4 of these. The Batrium long months. So let's start and pick the battery apart and see what we can do about it. So I'm going to use the Watchmon as the base unit and then I attach the long months. The long months are the slaves that actually do the balancing and the monitoring part. Um, the cables that are hooked up here have two uh, wires that goes to the batteries and I'm going to just crimp off or cut off um, the clip or the terminal in question actually and then I'm going to lengthen them roughly 15 centimeters. Um, the cable on the, the wires itself are like 26, 26 AWG and I'm using the same sort of size, actually a little bit thicker. Uh, the cable itself is actually acting as a fuse so it's really really important that you keep them as they are and it's also important to actually not hook them up together before the actual battery so you actually tie every longmon to its own um, connector or to its own uh, wires to the battery and that's pretty important because otherwise you could get very very strange phenomenons when it comes to metering the voltage I have seen it myself so uh, now it's just a matter of soldering all the wires that is going to extend the measuring and the balancing point and as you can see it's rather long tasking job because there is a lot of cables to do and meanwhile we do that I can also mention that um, when you are working with the contacts for long months you should or you need to be a little bit gentle as well because they are pretty fragile uh, so you just keep that in mind. When doing cables I am using heat shrinks everywhere of course to make sure that everything is nice and tidy. Uh, all those cables would be on the inside of the box so that's not a big issue and you won't be seeing them. Opening the battery pack up, uh, it's time to actually prepare the battery pack to actually take the long mon. Uh, first I remove the old um, BMS system that is inside. And it's just a matter of cutting everything off and getting rid of it. Um, I'm also going to hook the system or the battery up in a parallel mode and that's because I'm going to parallel several, th several of them uh, after the charger to keep them to roughly 300 amp hours. But before I can do that it's just a matter of getting the old stuff away. So let's see if we can get that on. When that's done, I'm actually preparing the cables on the front. Uh, there are cables for communication to this old system, but I'm s using this cable to actually parallel the battery packs instead, so I don't have to put one long mount on each cable. Um, so first what I do is actually hook those up a little bit quick. And you need to be aware of that every battery are connected in the same way. When I got these batteries I found out that several of them had different type of wiring on this contact and that could have been one of the reasons that I actually blew the system up before I got it because if they are differently and you connect them up you could cause issues to it, I don't know. Uh, so I'm just cutting everything away and making sure that I have enough cables to actually wire it up. And as you can see, heat shrinks everywhere, uh, making sure that everything is actually connected and is nice and tidy. Some uh, stripe, stripes around it, and then adding another heat shrink around that just to make sure that we have it connected and nothing falls out. And this is the inside, so I'm not paying that much of attention to how it looks as long as it's, it's safe and proper. The long mounts will be placed on the outside of the box, so I am losing the way of measuring the temperature of the cells. I know that, and that's not ideal, 
but that's how it is and there is no real place on the inside and ability to actually dissipate the heat. So what I do now is making all the holes so I get the cable through. Uh, first the holes for the cables, then I'm going back to actually just uh, drill them down a little bit to make sure they are ni nice and smooth. Next part is adding the holes for the actual long ones. And I'm just making sure also as well that uh, because I'm going to use a little bit of a double sided tape to keep them in place, this is not necessary at all. Uh, I just did it on a couple of the packs and therefore I, I had that in the video here as well. Um, it could be that it isolates the heat dissipation a little bit and causing them to get a little bit hotter, I'm not sure. Uh, I have both variants and I have not seen any difference so far. Measuring out the holes, uh, there are notches in the long months where you should tie the zip tie around and that's where I'm uh, drilling the holes. And then you may say, but you're using double sided tape, why not stick with that? Yeah, but the thing is that the long months will get hot and they can be 60-70 degrees and at that stage they will come loose from double sided tape. And that's also one of the reasons I didn't use it on the end, I only used it in this video. Or uh, Going back, cleaning it all up again, it's now time to add the cable stripes going through with this before you put them in the case or the, ca uh, the, the battery in the case again because when adding the long months just make sure that you do it very gently so you don't break the long months uh, you, you you should not over tie them now it's time to add the cables from the wire loom um, I will do it in one order so it goes from one side to the other this is something you can do in whatever order you want uh, but you will see that I go back and forth with a cable and I'm not going through exactly how to connect the Patreon system today but there is another video coming about that. So stay tuned with that and I will try to answer those questions in another video. Um, you could of course sleeve all the cables and make it very very neat. I'm not doing it in this video because it's just a quick video. I have sleeved a couple of other ones as well. I'm uh, getting the underside open to make sure that I can reach the points where I'm going to solder the uh, balancing leads and the voltage monitoring leads and this is very very important as I said earlier that you actually connect them as close as you can to the battery so you don't get a voltage sag. Now it's time to add the case or the battery into the case and this can be a little bit tricky because you have a lot of wires so just do it very very gently if you do it like me. Uh, make sure you have all the cables in the correct way because it is pretty tight and here you have the wires that is going to the battery for measuring and balancing so put the battery on the side and then it's a matter of getting the wires through and then you need to bring out the big soldering iron to get hold of or actually and actually get them soldering in place because there's quite a big copper plate and the copper plate will um, take the heat away rather fast so I'm doing every long mon to its own contact spaces one at a time. Uh, there are four S in this back battery and that means four long mons and that also means eight wires going from them, two from each. When you do it also make sure that you have same type of length of cables on every pack and everything. Just keep it the same, that's the best for all. When it's done just cross check that everything looks nice and then it's time to clean it up and actually get the cables nicely ordered. Um, I'm pointing everywhere, of course I didn't f I did forget to record the sound so I have to do overlay now instead. I'm getting the underside back again, making sure that the cables looks nice underneath. Some silver tape of course, or duct tape, just to make sure that they hold everything in place again and protect everything. Now the tricky part is to get everything back together. But on the other hand it's not that tricky if you just make it a little bit slowly and you should be able to get it in again. It's time to actually hook everything up. Uh, I'm starting with the lead for the communication on everyone and then I go back and add the power lead instead and the long one should power up and blink red and light green.
that's just showing that it's on and it's running. Um, they will turn off later on if you aren't using it. So basically guys, this video was just a very very quick video on how I mount the Batrium long mounts to the batteries I'm using for my big huge power wall. If you have any questions, don't forget that you can ask them down below and I try to answer every one that I can. Um, if you want to see the upcoming episode, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also like the video. And the thing is, even though it wasn't that much of instructions on how I did the actual install in this video, you should consider looking to the videos that is coming because I am going to do a more specific video that is very very detailed in how you actually set up a very very basic Patreon system because I know that people have been asking for that. Uh, next video I will concentrate on actually building the, the, the power wall or actually the power shelf where I'm going to store the batteries so don't forget to see that as well. So thank you guys and see you next time.